Hello, this is Sean again from Forward Home Enhancements and uh, still on the deck project the same day as the uh, as the one where I was showing you guys how to notch a post. Um, now what I want to talk to you guys about next is in, in most cases a necessary element of a, uh, of a of a good carrier beam. So diagonal bracing, right? These are short, obviously. Reason being is because I wanted to keep them uniform going all the way across and I only had so much material left and uh, I just didn't want to go buy no more 6 by 6s so I changed the design a little bit. So out front I have those real prominent uh, braces out there and I'm getting ready to put another series back in there. That was the carrier beam I was working on earlier only took me about an hour and a half to get all the concrete in, get the holes backfilled, post set, the second ply on, and uh, I also threw some some uh, structural screws in the back side of it. If you take a look, you can see that I put structural screws in the back of all the beams. Now those are Simpson timber screws, and they're one directional. And by one directional, I mean they only they only have to be screwed in from one side. If I was shooting that with nails, I'd have to shoot it from both sides, if that makes any sense. Um, but in this situation, using these structural screws, you only have to come from this side. Now, I don't have to go here and then, you know, run screws all the way down. For all technical purposes, um, I've never had a code officer tell me I have to do this. But, so, what I do is I run a series of three every 16 inches the whole way down the beam to fasten these two plies together. Reason being, us uh, forward home enhancements, we specialize in three main things, and it's roofs, decks, and structural beams. We do a lot of, uh, uh, like we'll remove a, a load-bearing wall, a structural transfer, stuff like that, and uh, we do it frequently, so I implemented that same practice in all the beams that we built. So uh, what I'm getting ready to show you right now is how to put in a diagonal brace. Or at least to get you started. A lot of people are afraid of this because there's 45 degree angles involved. But don't be scared of 45 degree angles. I'll tell you that. It's, it's nothing to be afraid of. And it, if you always keep this one thing in mind. A scribe is always more accurate than a measurement. You might be saying, what the hell are you talking about? Well, ow, watch your head too. So a scribe, meaning if I can find my pencil, I can show you what I'm talking about. Something I always lose is my pencil, and it's usually always on me too. So, say that's how you want your diagonal bracing to be, right? You want it to be like that. Instead of... And you know that this post, say this post is a little out of plumb. If you put two perfect 45 degree angles on there, and this is not a perfect 90 degree angle, this isn't going to add up. I hope that that makes sense. So a 45, 45, and then say that this is 100 degrees, and, and you try to fit that in there, it's going to look silly, or it's going to be a little low here or a little low there. How do we, you know, get around this situation? Well, take your pencil, inscribe down the back, and then inscribe across the top, and flip that bad boy over. Look what you got there. You buzz these, and set it back up in there. You're, 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 that's it. That's all you had to do. Now, I know that this is a 90 degree angle. I use my square. I know that this is plumb in every direction. It, I just know it is. So... I'm going to be using a 6x6 six six as, a, as a piece of diagonal bracing instead of, instead of using a 4x4 four four or even a 2x4 because I think that a 6x6 six six just looks meaty and it's like, it looks like it belongs there. I think that this looks silly when guys put a 2x4 diagonal bracing on a 2-ply beam and a 6x6. Six six. I think that's just, that's tacky. Um, a 6x6 six six isn't incredibly difficult to cut either. It just seems like it is. Now, if you remember before when I was telling you about uh, 
when I was telling you about the notching, the same thing applies to this. Now, what I want to do here is get my damn saw out of the way for one. I go over, grab my speed square, bring that back, find myself a decently square corner on this. Like you see, this little imperfection here. Like let's let's put that to the outside. That way we know that we got ourselves a nice a nice corner going up against that six by six. So. See, I still have the same issue. Uh, Alright, so we ended up finding ourselves a, a good place to start from. Now, here we go. Get right on the corner. Remember, trying to do this with a camera in my hand again. If you watched the last video, you know what I'm talking about. I'm going to make a, make a line across. I'm gonna buzz this guy off right there. I'm gonna pull, I know I need 15, 15 inches for that. So I got this new Craftsman tape measure. I don't know how I feel about it yet, but it seems to have been, uh, been a decent tape measure thus far. Now what I usually do is I'll cut this off first, but for informational purposes, I am going to just set my the edge of my tape measure at the end of that line. And I'm going with my shorts. 15 inches right here, right? 15 inches. Now I'm going to let the angle grow. So I'm going to bring my speed square over to that mark. There it is. I'm going to let it grow. That's what I mean by letting it grow. I'm going to try this again, making sure that I'm holding the speed square on the edge of the board. There we are. We're in business. Now, remember the whole three inch notch thing, right? Coming down three inches. I'm going to turn you guys that way. Sorry about that. Oh man, I almost dropped you. You guys kind of did a backflip there. Sorry. Now we're going up, getting back on our little groove. Oh, is this difficult? I need to get like a GoPro or something. Oh, that was incredibly hard. All right. So you see how I just drew that line going up? Now, I'm gonna figure in my distance here. It doesn't have to go all the way to the top and then all that stuff that that looks fine the way it is that's actually going to get cut off so you know that at your greatest point going up that way it, it definitely can't exceed you know you figure nine inches at its greatest point so from here it can't exceed nine so let's just make it i don't know six to six Six. Six. There we are. Connect the darn dots, right? It's going behind there anyway. At least we're going to have some meat coming up behind the, uh, behind the carrier beam. And it will have something to get fastened to. Now, like out front, you want to make sure that your calculations are dead nuts because you don't want anything to look silly out front. Now, all the way back in here, I mean, who's going to come in here and climb underneath there and, and say that, oh, well, you know, it should have been two inches higher. Don't be so critical on yourself, especially if you're just starting this. If you're just starting in this stuff, take your time and enjoy yourself. I hope that you're not in this just for the money because I mean these jobs they pay but if you're trying to get rich off of this you uh, should really consider uh, consider a different strategy because uh, the trades are for some people who are passionate about it if you own your own company you know what I mean if you don't absolutely love this stuff you ought to hang it up 
because it's ball busting work and it requires a shit ton of effort like any company does but you're breaking your back every day and you still have to do the same uh, things that you have to do running any company so um yeah you cut that stuff out and then the same way as i showed you before you cut down here with your cirque saw cut up here or you can even get this with a miter if you have the skill set um cut the lines out then use your hacksaw to cut down the rest of the line what you can't get with your cirque saw take your chisel buzz it the rest of the way out now if you look here you see that i use timber locks or timber screws to fasten it through here to here and then up here into the beam and then i also these are timber locks I use these ledger locks here to fasten in through the back to grab it from this direction because I haven't got my mind made up yet if I want to put a screw through here or not. But I hope this helped someone. If it did, give me a like. Um, and I would uh, I would like to make more videos for you guys. I have a, I'm not trying to be, you know, egotistical or anything, but I have a plethora of information inside of my brain that I would love to share with you guys that I could save you a, a shit ton of money and uh, get the job done and get it done right. So, thanks for watching.